Hi, this is John with Everyday Bible Study. I want to welcome you to uh, uh, beautiful Jackson, Kentucky. It's still winter time here in Jackson, uh, but we're outside. Uh, we've had a few warm days, and we're down here at the Qantas Park, and it's just uh, south of the, uh, well, sorry, sorry, just north of the North Fork of the Kentucky River. And uh, we might have, uh, on a few of these videos, might have a little bit of video of uh, the North Fork of the Kentucky River. And uh, we're in a park that was underwater uh, previously, uh, just recently actually. Uh, we had flooding here in Jackson and uh, the river gets up and it got up over this area that the park's in. But uh, now uh, the park is alive and it's starting to dry out. I had to actually drive through water to get here. But you can probably hear the various birds around me and uh, they're, they're enjoying this warm weather and uh, the daffodils are starting to poke out and that's not normal, it's, it's much warmer than it normally should be this time of year but it gives us a chance uh, to uh, enjoy the beautiful nature that God's creating a little bit early this year and that's just a wonderful thing. Uh, we're going to talk about temptation and we're uh, looking through this booklet here it's called The Amazing Life of Jesus Christ and you can go to World Missionary Press and get yourself a copy and just go online, just Google that, World Missionary Press. And uh, this is talking about Jesus overcoming temptation. The Bible tells us that if we are a Christian, that uh, we can, God can provide us a way to overcome any temptation in our life. Any sexual temptation, any uh, drugs or alcohol, anything that might harm us or might come against the will of God. God will provide us a way out. And he did that for Jesus. Jesus, by the way, uh, experienced all manner of temptations, probably much stronger temptations that we, than we face as mankind. And uh, he actually had to face temptation directly from Satan. Now, some of our temptations as man or woman uh, will come from demons that are under the control of Satan. And uh, sometimes it's on our own uh, personal desires. Uh, maybe uh, the desire for flesh, uh, sexual temptation, or uh, maybe the lust of the eyes, uh, or the pride of life, the pride that we have as a person. Uh, it could be our own personal desires, or it could be temptations directly uh, from a demonic force that Satan would provide us. But we always, always have a way out. And we're going to see how Jesus dealt with temptation. And we're looking from the book of Matthew. This is the fourth chapter. Uh, I'm going to look at verses 3 through 10. It says, Now when the tempter came, that's talking about Satan, uh, came to him, and coming to Jesus, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Now, why would he say something like that? Well, actually, uh, got to know the situation that Jesus was in. Jesus uh, had been preparing for his ministry. He hadn't really fully started his ministry yet. But he started his ministry at age 30. At, that was the time in the Hebrew uh, race that a uh, person could become a rabbi or a teacher or an elder uh, of the Jews. And uh, at this time, uh, he decided to start his ministry in a wonderful way, uh, just being a perfect example to us. He started with prayer. And he spent a, day, a period of 40 days fasting and talking to God in prayer, spending that to prepare for his ministry. And um, he uh, uh, did this out in the wilderness so he wouldn't have to worry about uh, anybody being around him. Well, we've got some sunlight coming right behind me, don't we? And um, uh, he wanted to be alone that he could spend time with his father in prayer to prepare for his ministry. But you know, Satan uh, loved to try to mess him up and tried to destroy and kill Jesus on numerous occasions. Of course, he did manage to kill Jesus when Jesus died on the cross. But Jesus rose from the dead by the power of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, this, this happened prior to this. And the devil is out in the desert trying to tempt Jesus to sin. And in order to destroy this ministry that he's getting ready to do, getting ready to participate in. And uh, so uh, Jesus is facing... And you know, typically mankind uh, doesn't face Satan directly. And, uh, but uh, God can provide him a way out, even if that were to occur. Speaking of Satan uh, facing mankind directly, uh, one of the 12 apostles did face uh, Satan 
correctly, and that was Judas, and he didn't do a good job with his situation. Uh, Satan actually uh, ended up entering into Judas, possessing his soul, because um, he apparently wasn't saved, as far as we can tell. And uh, that was when Judas betrayed Jesus uh, to uh, be captured by the Romans uh, and helping out the Jews and uh, leading him to his crucifixion. This camera is bouncing all over the place because the wind's blowing. I'm going to try to hold it here. And uh, it says here, uh, I'll just reread what I just read. It said, Now the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he had, never, he had not eaten anything in a period of 40 days. And he had um, uh, been uh, taking in water, but he had had no solid food for 40 days. That's just about as far as a man can go without taking food. Uh, but uh, Jesus said, uh, but he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And uh, so actually the words of wisdom that are in the Bible are more important to us than even food. But, uh, and Jesus was letting the devil know this. Then the devil sent him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to them, if you are the son of God, and of course he was, uh, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So uh, uh, here he's tempting Jesus to commit suicide. And uh, you know that's a big problem for a lot of the young people and even the military people here in the United States. And a lot of times when you see uh, people that are suicidal or homicidal, they are being tempted by demonic forces. And uh, here he was trying to get Jesus to do something that would lead to his death. Uh, but um, Jesus confronts him. Now, how does Jesus confront Satan? He confronts him with Scripture. Uh, Satan was actually taking Scripture and twisting it uh, to get its uh, meaning that was other than the original meaning. But Jesus quotes his Scripture correctly. And uh, you say, well... Uh, where are these scriptures that Jesus quotes? These, all these scriptures that Jesus quote is from the Bible's book of Deuteronomy. That's the fifth book in the Old Testament, and it's full of wonderful wisdom. And Jesus uh, quotes to him from that book. It says, Jesus said to him, It is written again, uh, it's like telling Satan, uh, i got to hit, hit this situation with scripture again because you keep tempting me. But said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again, uh, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, uh, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. So here we see uh, Satan's got a lot of gall. Uh, he's trying to get Jesus Christ to worship him uh, even though... Uh, he is Satan, and Jesus was part of casting him out of heaven And when there was war in heaven. Uh, at one point in heaven, uh, Lucifer, uh, that's another name for Satan, wanted to be God or take over and uh, do the part of God. And uh, he wanted to take over uh, the power that God had, that Jesus had, because Jesus was, was right there in heaven. And Jesus tells his uh, disciples, uh, that uh, he, this is before the creation of the earth, uh, he saw Satan uh, fall from heaven because him and one third of all the demons were cast out of heaven. And uh, one third of the angels, they were angels at that time, but when they went into rebellion against God, they became demons because they were no longer in heaven. And now they, uh, at least some of them, roam the earth trying to do the same uh, things that Satan does, trying to steal and destroy mankind. But uh, we have power and protection from Satan. And even if Satan takes our life, we have the gift of eternal life if we're saved. So uh, uh, we don't have to fear Satan. Uh, here Satan was trying to destroy Jesus, and he offered him all these kingdoms of the world. And uh, Satan has great power. He has uh, power to actually fulfill uh, that thing that he told Jesus, uh, that if Jesus would worship him. But Jesus replies to him and said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only 
shall you serve. And that's what we're supposed to do. We should worship the Lord our God and we should serve him. And uh, Satan would love it if we were to serve him and to worship him. That would, because he would be able to get us into his rebellion and destroy our life and lead us into destruction. Uh, he hates mankind because mankind was created in God's image. And uh, we're very special to uh, God, very special. And uh, he doesn't want to see us succeed. But um, he wants to still kill and destroy us. But uh, Jesus comes to seek and to save and to provide us uh, eternal life through him. And uh, let me read this, read this little passage here from Hebrews. It says, For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. And that includes you and includes me. Uh, we all get tempted by Satan or by the lust of our own flesh. But uh, God loves us and he wants us uh, to provide us a way out of sin, a way around from sin. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin leads to death and it leads to eternal death. And uh, we uh, can be absolutely destroyed by sin and uh, it will lead us uh, to Satan's fate and I'm trying to get in front of the sun here with my head, so this won't blind y'all too bad. But um, the eternal fate of, of Satan is that he will be cast into the lake of fire, into hell, for eternity. And that's a place of eternal suffering. And uh, we don't want that same fate. And that fate could be ours if we do not decide to accept the path that God has created for us uh, to follow. Uh, in order that uh, we can have our sin overcome in our life. But he allowed Jesus Christ to die on the cross and to take all the sins of the world, all the sins of mankind throughout history upon himself. And then uh, he was crushed for our iniquities. And he bled his blood so that we can gain salvation. And the wrath of God fell upon Jesus Christ himself instead of us. Uh, and we deserve death. We des deserve destruction. Why? Because we have this rebellion from Satan in our hearts, in our lives, and in our actions. And uh, God deserves uh, to destroy mankind. But he loves us enough that he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us, that we may gain salvation through him. And the Bible tells us that we can be saved from sin. We don't have to die because of sin, because Jesus died for our sins, and uh, he is a savior. Uh, that will save us from our sins if we believe in him. And so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. And thank you that many people will believe when they hear your word and they'll accept Jesus Christ uh, as their Savior and Lord and that they will get protection from Satan and that they will gain protection uh, and uh, that their sins will be redeemed and that you will see them no more, will be washed clean white because of the sinlessness of Jesus Christ applied to our life when we believe on him in faith. So Lord, we pray that many people will believe on Jesus Christ for their salvation and that, uh, that they will uh, uh, repent of their sins, turn away from their sins, and then they'll turn toward Jesus and that they'll gain the salvation and eternal life that you provide and that they will grow in you and be made a new creation in Christ and be made part of your family. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for watching the Everyday Bible Study uh, today. And share this message with somebody because this message could absolutely save their eternal soul. Uh, they can hear the word of God being proclaimed. And uh, Jesus, he overcomes the tempter. He overcomes Satan himself. And uh, that's an encouraging message. And uh, that means that... Uh, we can do it too. He showed us how. And another thing is it's real, real, real important for you to study the scripture, study the word of God, uh, so that uh, you can have uh, his word in your heart. And that way when Satan comes against you or somebody who's unsaved, um, then you can defend your faith uh, by sharing the word of God with them. And if you know the word of God really well, You'll know what verses uh, actually apply to the very situations that you're in. And uh, you can come to uh, uh, maybe win somebody else over to Jesus Christ. Uh, 
So until next time, this is John with Everyday Bible Study, praying that you have a great day. Bye.